in this shot, what I'm showing you is just the opening page for the National Center for Biotechnology Information, and the URL is listed so you can go there. From, from this page, you can get to an overview of what's in GeneBank. And for those of you that aren't familiar with GeneBank, and even those of you that are, I really recommend that you spend some time with some of the resources on the site, some of the overview resources and tutorial resources that are available, because I think it will open up the sequence data to you and make it uh, much more accessible. Um, the kind of information that is stored in GeneBank is demonstrated by this screenshot, which just shows the, the top part of a, a GeneBank flat file for the SP6 gene, or the gene that determines whether a tomato is a bush or a vine. And what I want to point out is that in the database that we're looking at here, which is the nucleotide database, that there is a quite extensive information um, related to the function of that gene. Okay? And so this would be what Alan refers to as annotation. This is detailed annotation information. If you scroll down, you not only see whose work this was and where it was published, but you see information on the features of the gene. So it tells you where uh, the message would be coded within this gene. There's a translation uh, from nucleotide into amino acid, and then the sequence itself. Okay. So this is a typical flat file. Um, if you, you can change what you look at in GeneBank. So instead of looking at the GeneBank flat file, you can just change it and look at only what they call the FASTA or FASTA sequence file. And so now we lose a lot of the information that was in the annotation file, and we pick up only the sequence file. And the sequence file is in this FASTA format. So in this format, a name follows this caret symbol. And then after the first paragraph break, everything is sequence. And for those of you that are, are going to be using sequence to data to look for differences, it's likely that it's these FASTA formatted files that you're going to be working with and doing comparisons to look for either insertion deletion type mutations, simple sequence repeats, or the single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP mutations that Alan was talking about. Okay. So now if we go back to the National Center for Biotechnology Information, and we look at the kind of databases that are housed there. Um, there's four databases that I've highlighted here. Um, each of them contains slightly different information. Um, so the nucleotide database, that was the one that I showed you for the SP6 gene, that contains high quality annotated sequences. So there's quite a bit of information associated with the sequence in that database. The EST, or Express Sequence Tag database, is related to something that Alan talked about. These represent messenger RNAs that have been cloned and then sequenced, usually in a one-pass sequence. Um, and so there, there are going to be about 500 to 700 base pairs in length. And the quality is going to be somewhat variable. Um, but they, they, we will know what tissue they came from, uh, what organism, and even what variety they came from. The genomic short sequences database contains genomic sequence. And as an example, if, if people were to sequence PCR products, they might put it in to the GSS database. And so a number of tomato sequences um, from validation studies were put into the GSS database, and so that's also a resource for looking for single nucleotide polymorphisms through comparisons. And then finally, there's the Unigene database. Um, so each Unigene is a set of transcript sequences that appear to come from the same locus. So this is a, it's essentially a bioinformatic compilation where all of the ESTs for a specific organism are contigued and then the unigenes are posted as one set. Okay? I'll give you some examples on these. So let's start with the unigene set here. And if we scroll down, so you can see here that it's organized based on taxonomy. And if you scroll down, you can see that there is a set for Solanum lycopersicum or tomato, and there's 18,228 at, at this release. 
Okay, so these re represent what's thought to be 18,228 18, unique genes of tomato. And again, this is a, a data set that you can work with either directly at NCBI or you can download it. Okay. The GSS database is, is much less heavily annotated as is shown here. We, from this, what we get is an ID number. Um, we know this genomic and then there's some sequence data there. 